this. First of all, three times is too long to be telling somebody grown about putting on a mask. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another vlog of mine. My name is Thomas. I am Traveling Gun. So today I have a, it was originally a five day trip but they offer premium pay, so I made it into a six day trip. So yes, I'm making work in a six day trip. I'm in the jet bridge because maintenance is on board, working on something uh, right now. So uh, this is, uh, this was like I said, originally a five day, and then I had three days off. My company offered 200% for, for more days to pick up trips, so I picked up an easier trip. I don't have to go home, it just I just added it to the back end of this current trip. So I still have two days off instead of three. And then I have another five day trip at the end of this month. So, and another thing about this plane, there's no PBS. So one of us have to read the announcements for the other. Today and today I have three legs. I do a Birmingham turn and then I'll end up in Des Moines, Iowa tonight. So I'll see you guys once I get to Iowa. I'm back, I made it to my hotel here in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, Today was very uneventful. I did read an email to where we we have to wear a mask pretty much all the time whenever we're in public, with the exception of basically from like our car. But when we get on the employee bus, we have to wear a mask. When we're walking through the terminal, we have to wear a mask. Hotel shuttle, we have to wear a mask. So basically, until we get to our hotel room is when you can take the mask off. Uh, it's my first time actually staying in this hotel here in Des Moines. Uh, we used to stay in a different one. Um, it's, it's a small hotel room, but I'll give you a little tour. One bed, chair, you have the desk, uh, window, not really a view. Another desk here, I have a microwave and a refrigerator with the freezer part in it. And the bathroom. And they have these uh, little sticker things on the door here. So basically after they clean your room, this will let you know if anyone else has been in there or not. Um, also, another thing I did, so I did bring food. So I, I said this month I was gonna lose five pounds every trip that I work. So last trip, I uh, lost four pounds. So I didn't quite hit my five pounds. So I'm gonna make up for this trip, I'm trying to lose six pounds, which is basically a pound a day because I'm working on a six day trip. So I did bring food. I brought pretty much these are the carrots and celery, you know, for something I wanna snack on. I did lettuce, which is salad. Pretty much is what I'm going for. Tomatoes. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm monitoring my food. So I'm gonna eat it in this bowl and that's the amount that I'm gonna eat every single day. Um, of course, I brought some crackers just for me to snack on some food like that. Uh, I do have to have some soda, just one one a day. I do drink like six bottles of water a day on the flight. Um, so another thing, if y'all hear my stomach growl at any time during this vlog, just pray for me. Just know I'm hungry. But I, the way my body is set up is I have to eat small portions in that way. That's how I lose the weight and I do a lot of cardio. I've tried everything else. Um, I lost four pounds basically last week without even actually dieting. So it's just me working out. So I know I'll probably lose more than six pounds with me actually you know, watching my portions of eating and pretty much eating low calorie diet. Um, I forgot eggs, which I was gonna do. I forgot to boil me some eggs and have it with my salad. But I probably have like one cheat day in between the six days somewhere where I actually get some real food in my in my system. But that's kind of where I'm at with it. Uh, this actually is my, probably my fifth time actually bringing food from home, like an actual prep to where I actually cut up things. And I just recently bought this soup, this lunch box with my suitcase with my allotment that my company gives. And this is the first time I've actually, actually used it. So, but that's what I'm doing on this trip. I'm, I'm going to be trying to lose six pounds for this on six days, basically one pound a day. Oh, another thing. Let me tell you, crew scheduling can be, I don't know if they did this on purpose. So a uh, person I worked with on my last trip, 
she she's a line holder, but she swapped her five day for a reserve because she didn't want to do it and thinking she wasn't going to get called. She was wrong. So they not only did they call her, they put her on the exact same trip that she swapped for reserve days. I said, man, crew scheduling know how to get you. But uh, I'm going to go work out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is day two of six for me. Uh, just, I have a 5.30 van. I've been up since 4.30 this morning. Uh, today, I only have two legs. I go from Des Moines to Minneapolis, and then I have the long leg, which is Minneapolis to Charlotte. And I'm 85% sure that this used to be a mainline flight. And we did not do this, at least not out of Atlanta. If anything, they probably would have done it out of Minneapolis or New York. But I haven't heard anybody say that they've done this route before. So this is probably one of those things of consolidating to us versus because of flight loads. So we're, I'm doing uh, Minneapolis to Charlotte, which is, is boring because you don't, we're, not, we're still not doing a service yet. Um, the only thing I might be doing differently on this flight is serving beer and wine if they cater us with it. So that's the only difference that I see uh, doing. But other than that, I'm, I'm going to be sitting for two hours doing nothing and twiddling my thumb. But I'll see you guys once I get to Charlotte. If anything comes up, I'll make sure I'll let you guys know. So I made it to my room here in Charlotte, and when I tell you that flight was extra long, well, it was only two and a half, two hours and six minutes. But the fact that we're not doing any service, it made it a lot longer because once we're done passing out the little care package bags, which took five minutes, there's nothing else to do. You know, even though we walked back through through the cabin, pretty much everybody was asleep. So um, another surprise. You know, with the whole social distancing thing, we have an announcement once we land to allow, you know, tell the passengers to allow the person in front of you, the plane first, you know, get six feet away. Do you know people do not stand up anymore? Sometimes stand up anymore once the seatbelt sign comes up, everybody stays seated and they follow the directions, which is surprising to me. Um, this is probably like my third time here in Charlotte and um, show you the room here. So I have my living room area with the sofa, um, I guess that's an ottoman. I have a desk here, a refrigerator. I don't think it has the freezer part. No, it doesn't have the freezer part in it, but do have a refrigerator and a sink um, that's not free. So whatever you see this, this is not free. This is $5 bottle. I don't drink coffee. Two beds. And my wash area I should say and the bathroom it's not that big but so apparently this hotel last night had a power outage so they're out of power for four hours so they can't make the keys so somebody has to let us in our room every single time we want to come and go so that's where we're at with it uh so I'll see you guys a little bit later on or probably in the morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is day three of my five day. And I got to say, it's pretty easy because I only have two legs each day after the first day. So it hasn't been too hard. Um, my next five days have a little bit more legs than that. But today, again, I have only two legs. I go from Charlotte back to Minneapolis and then from Minneapolis to Madison, Wisconsin, which this will be my first time in Madison, Wisconsin, or ever going to Madison, Wisconsin at all. Um, other than that, there's nothing new that's going on with me or the company. Um, because, uh, oh, I did swap my schedule around again at the end of the back end of this uh, five day when I said I did pick up something else, but there was another trip that was in open time and I just swapped it out because I didn't have to sit as long in between the next flight once I get done with this trip and I get back a lot earlier on the sixth day. So that's why I went ahead and swapped it out. Still, I think I lose maybe 30 minutes um, on the hours, but the hours are pretty much basically the same. So I went ahead and swapped that. 
but today our schedule drops today so um I'll, I'll let you see my reaction to my schedule and what I got and did I, if I got what I bid for um, for next month. And next month is my birthday month, so I'll see if I got my birthday off um, or not. So I'll see you guys a little bit later on today. I have made it here to Madison, Wisconsin. I'm staying in a hotel room, same brand of hotel that I stayed in when I was in Augusta, so the layout is the exact same. I'm not going to give a room tour because I, it's the same exact hotel brand. I still have a full kitchen, a, refri a full refrigerator, and a microwave um, that's built in. So, schedules came out. I pretty much got what I wanted for. I bid for max days off, and that was it. Ended up with 14 days off. I have my birthday off. Um, so when schedules well, we're able to start trading and picking up at five o'clock central time today So when those when that happens, I'm just gonna go in and try to build my schedule the way that I want it to be built And that's the reason why I bid for max days off is that way I can kind of go in and build because right now I'm only at 75 hours, which that's our guarantee that we get So I'm gonna go in and try to rebuild my schedule the way that I want to want it to and how I want it to fall and And do that and that's what I usually do most of the time when I can get what I want as far as max days off. Another airline, you know, send out warrant notice of furloughs for flight attendants. And, you know, it's just a warrant saying that, you know, letting them know that the possible furloughs of 9,000 flight attendants, I believe it is. And again, I want to say always, always keep a positive mindset because they can always give you a call back. And you never know when they're going to call you back. I'm not for sure which their contract states, but there's always room to get called back. So with that being said, I'm going to go work out. Yes, unless I have to get up at 4 in the morning. A very, another early report for me. But I'm done by 11 tomorrow. So I'll see you guys a little bit later on. Y'all have a good day. everybody so I'm in Cleveland and I know I was just in Madison but I wouldn't say woke up late I hit the snooze button too long too many times and um, I was rushing to get ready this morning so that's why I didn't speak to you all this morning so I am here in Cleveland you know what I'm finna... <sighs> yeah, it has a beanbag as you can see from the little slight room to it. This is my first time staying at this hotel. This is my actual second layover in Cleveland um, ever. Today, you know what? I'm not even tired. Usually I'm so used to saying today's go home day, but I'm on a five day instead of a four day. But it hasn't been hard. I'm not tired from working because it's only been two legs per day since the first day. And I think tomorrow I have three legs, well four because I did pick up on the back end of this trip. So I'm not tired from working, um, just tired from, you know, pushing my, getting up early in the morning is basically what it is. It's just really getting up early in the morning, not even the work because it hasn't really been long routes. So today I just went from Madison back to Minneapolis and then Minneapolis to Cleveland. And that's all I did today. I'm still trying to finesse my schedule for next month to try to pick up some things and just get it the way that I want it to, to, to be. Um, other than that, there's nothing new here. It is 11 o'clock Eastern time in Cleveland. So I'm pretty much finna, you know, probably eat something or take a little nap and then I'm gonna get up and go work out because it's early enough for me to take a nap and it not affect me later on tonight. 
So that's what I think I'm going to do, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Today is day five of my six-day trip. I did the same thing I did yesterday. Well, yeah, yesterday. Woke up late. Kept hitting snooze. But yesterday, my dumb behind went worked out, came to came back to the room, took a shower, and I ended up falling asleep around 4 o'clock, which I tried not to do. And I woke up at 8. So I couldn't go back to sleep until 3 o'clock this morning, so I slept for about an hour. Um, I have about five minutes to get downstairs for the van. Um, so I'll see you guys a little bit later. I have 11 hour duty day today. I go from Cleveland to Detroit, Detroit to uh, Madison and then Madison to Atlanta, sit for two hours and then I go to Wilmington, uh, uh, North Carolina. And I have an overnight there and then tomorrow's go home day for me, not today. So I'll see you guys a little bit later on once I get to Wilmington. So I made it to my hotel in Wilmington. And uh, this is the add-on that I picked up from off of, uh, on the back end of my five day that I'm working. So I have to be up uh, van six tomorrow. And uh, I do the one leg back to Atlanta and I'm done. Got paid pre premium pay for that. So... I wanted to talk to y'all today because, uh, so you know we have to wear masks. It's mandatory that we wear masks on planes. So a guy from Madison, when I was going from Madison, not Madison, but uh, Detroit to Madison, um, he walked on. He had on, he didn't have a mask. He had like a face covering. So, you know, I greeted him, gave him a hand sanitizer, a uh, hand wipe, and said, hey, do you mind, could you put on your mask, please? I know he hurt me because he looked at me like, what you know what did you just say to me like uh, he heard me so he sat down in first class you know I wanted to give him a chance to settle in you know put make sure he put his mask on so after he settled in I looked over he didn't put his mask on so I said two separate announcements that's not a part of our uh, regular announcements that we say to passengers about compliance with wearing masks so do my demo and as I'm doing the last walkthrough I look over he doesn't have his mask on still so I, I, you know I didn't want to cause a scene that's the reason why I did the PA announcements didn't want to really single him out but he didn't do he didn't listen so uh, I kneeled down and said um, you have it's mandatory that you wear your mask he looked over at me literally and this is what he did Put his mask literally on his chin and all i did was just looked at him like this <laughs> okay all right I'm I, I literally, seriously i cannot make this up that is what he did so i'm an easy going person you know or anything like that i don't have no power trip so i just let it be told the gate agent at madison oh she wouldn't she, i told her what happened how how I, I i addressed him several times she was like oh he's not gonna be flying with us until the pandemic is over with boom and it's out of my hands now. You know, I gave him a chance. But you know, at this, while this was going on, I was in, in mid-flight checking my email for work. And it said, we have to tell the passenger three times. We have to give, we have a warning card or whatever that we give them three times. First of all, three times is too long to be telling somebody grown about putting on a mask. These kids comply more than these adults, which I, I can have more patience with the kids because they're children. So that was, you know my day to day as far as that's the first time I've had somebody that literally did not just want to put on a mask I, like I said I'm not gonna argue with you I'm not the one to argue whatsoever I'm not gonna press it I'm gonna just be like okay cuz I, I can be petty but other than that listen your boy is tired like what I mean tired I'm sleepy I couldn't fall asleep last night like I said because I fell asleep at four slept four hours by accident and I was up until three, actually fell asleep around three something and had to, and my alarm went off at four. So I'm kind of been running off one hour of sleep and I had an 11 hour duty day today. So I can't go to sleep now because it's only five o'clock. So I have to get up and go do something. Um, if you remember, Wilmington is where they have a Walmart across the street and there's a lake and everything like that. So I've been, I've been here in my previous vlogs. Um, I don't know, but. That's, that's it. This is the first thing, the guy that didn't want to wear the mask. Um, 
So, but I finally get to say this. Tomorrow is go home day for me. Day six. So I'll see you guys in the morning um, on go home day. So y'all know today wouldn't be complete without um, any drama. So I'm still in Wilmington. I'm delayed because there's a bird strike on the wing. And we have to wait for a maintenance person to come out to actually wipe it off or to see about it. So it was supposed to be done last night, but I guess the crew that not the actual flying crew, but the, the ramp personnel last night didn't pay any attention and we wouldn't have been delayed. So we were supposed to leave at 7.15. It is now 7.45. Um, hey, that's what the life is about. You know, it's unpredictable. And it's all, you know, it's all everybody knows. It's always something on go home day. And the fact that I picked this up. So like I said, I work one leg, get paid, premium paid for it and I get back early so it's still like I still have a full three days off because I'm back so early in the day um, we're still waiting on um, the maintenance guy to come out to uh, check the bird strike because the first officer said it's clearly a bird strike because there's blood on the wing so we have to wait for them to wipe it off or do whatever it is that they need to do so hey it's the life until next time, y'all have a great day.